Drink with James, episode 146. Back in the office, every day it is a little bit less and a little bit more of a construction site. We finish some things, we start other ones. Um, you know, last but not least, the bar is now being worked on. And soon, hopefully in a few weeks, we'll be able to give you guys a full MTV crib style tour of the new space. You'll see the bar. Uh, hopefully one day this office will be fixed and I won't be sitting at a child's school desk uh, in a random corner. Um, but it's good to have things to look forward to in general. So speaking of, I'm going to St. Lucia tomorrow, which is kind of uh, funny because I've been asking people today like what they're doing for the weekend since this is my Friday. Uh, and everyone looks at me weird because it's, it's, what's today? Today's Wednesday. Today it's Wednesday. Uh, and anyway, you know how you do, I mean, obviously we're all self-involved creatures and uh, just assume that what we're doing, everyone else is doing. It's like when you check in for a flight and you tell the woman who's checking you in or, or man uh, when they're like, have a good flight and you're like, yeah, you too. Um, and you're always like, wait, you're not flying anywhere. Um, so yeah, I've been, I've been excited. You know, I haven't gone on a, a trip that wasn't a family trip in a, in a minute. So looking forward to just like chilling out and, and kind of doing nothing while being surrounded by rainforests and beaches and tucked into an expensive, beautiful hotel. So those are my plans right after this. Well, actually not right after this. Right after this, I'm getting my first ever spray tan. I am going to be a completely different person not just the way I look, but my entire personality I plan on changing. Uh, I'm Swedish. I've never had a tan in my life. Uh, our client is San Tropez. They're fantastic. They uh, do great spray tans here in the city, I've heard. Um, so I have an appointment with their celebrity tanner uh, in about an hour. Uh, so looking forward to my first tan. And maybe the next time you guys see me, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, you're so tan from your trip. It's 100% not that. It is all the spray tan, but I will be documenting the ridiculous experience as much as I can without embarrassing myself too much. Um, should we jump into it? Oh yeah, I do have something to talk about. Um, so I saw this, this, okay. So this is something we've talked about a bunch, but I, I just, I keep feeling like I need to continue to harp on it, right? Like you see all these posts, influencers being like, you guys know I struggle with dry skin or oily hair or whatever affliction the product that they are doing a sponsored post for presumably fixes. Um, and it's like, it's always so ridiculous because I, I feel like I feel like like influencers like you you know are not going far enough to make these things real, right? Like saying I have dry skin or you guys know I have dry skin and I've been using this product and it's been great is not really compelling. I think that like, you know, we've been talking about how you have to actually use the product and you have to bring your personal experiences into that post and without tying your experience to the benefits of the product, it's really hard to make it sound real and authentic. Uh, and I just saw a, a bunch of sponsored posts from influencers this weekend that were truly terrible. Uh, and w I thought were pretty embarrassing because there really was just no effort to tie the messaging to a real personal experience or problem that the person was having. And like, you know, in advertising, they call it this like moment of confirmation, you know, in, in ads when they like, you know, put their hand on a, on a memory foam mattress and you see the, the handprint or they squeeze uh, toilet paper to show you how soft it is, or they, you know, pour water on a paper towel and have marbles on it to show that it's strong. Like they do things, they don't say the paper towel is strong. They show you that the paper towel is strong. And I think that like, it is important for you to think about in your posts, creating those moments of confirmation. And if you can't show the actual benefits of something, I do think that you have to do a better job 
convincing me the problem that you say this pro- this product is solving is real and that you actually experience that. And a lot of times, you know, the way to do that is to be specific, right? Like you have to specifically talk about, you know, if you have dry skin, like I, I think that you have to say something that feels honest to, to like, so that in our brains, we don't just tick off and say like, nope, this is an ad, I'm ignoring it. Um, and it's, again, I know it's not easy because like brands, it's always last minute, they don't give you enough time, but like, I was really like embarrassed looking at these posts. I was embarrassed for the influencers for having published them. I was embarrassed for whoever set the deal up. I was embarrassed and sad for the brand. Uh, They're total train wrecks. And I think that like, you know, it's, it's like stealing. I think that if, if you are putting so little effort into something and again, not into just the post that these posts were all like, they were well shot and they were definitely built to get engagement, but like the caption and like the storytelling around it was, was so non-existent that like, it honestly felt like stealing. And if that is the level that the industry is going to operate at, then it's got absolutely no chance because, you know, people aren't dumb. And this, you know, this stream of money that is flowing into the space is not, you know, divined from above and it is not going to just continue to happen. Um, as an industry, we need to prove that this stuff is worth it. And that is on the brand's side to make it worth it and on the influencers to do a good job. But some of the stuff I saw this weekend was, was depressing. And I think that all of you, if you've done a sponsored post, you know, if you haven't done this in a while, go back through your feed, look at your sponsored posts and ask yourself if, if you just followed you a week ago, if you would believe what you were talking about. And if you would find the story that you were telling compelling. Um, I think that more often than not, you've gotten busy and tied up in the business side of things. And you've just a lot of times gotten lazy and are not putting the kind of amount of effort into it that you should be. And it will come back to bite, not just each influencer who's not putting that effort forth, but the entire industry. Um, because it's, if this space cools, it's not going to cool in certain places. It's going to cool across the board and dramatically like this space will get cold much faster than it got hot. And, um, that is a real concern that everybody should have. And it is something that each one of us in the space should take on and try and fix because again, we are not owed this life. You are not owed money for posting stuff on your Instagram. That is a privilege, uh, and something that we have to take seriously. So end rant, let's go to questions. Question one is, do I think Instagram will hide like counts? There was an article, uh, some leaked version of Instagram uh, where they hid like counts. Um, You know, look, I mean, you guys remember the bug where they got rid of vertical scrolling. Instagram is trying stuff all the time. um, And they are trying new versions of the platform constantly. And some of them, like getting rid of vertical scrolling, are much more extreme than others, uh, you know, I don't know that they'll get rid of like counts. I also don't know how valuable like counts are anymore because like without, I think they're still valuable in reporting and they will never get rid of the ability to like something, I don't think. Um, and they won't get rid of a influencer's ability or a person's ability to see those likes. Um, I think the platform could be a better place if you didn't see the likes out there. I think that you might find yourself posting stuff that you just liked and you wanted to put into the world rather than stuff that you thought would do really well. But that that engagement is still going to drive the algorithm and it's still going to drive performance. And so it's still going to be important. So removing that like count certainly might change the way you perceive the platform, but it's not going to change the way the platform works. And it's not going to change the way that 
people are talking about the success or failure of a certain post. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of in the middle if they're going to do it. I, I think that would be a pretty big change. Um, and I think there is a small group of people who are saying, hey, this is, this is a big problem. We need to change this. This is hurting people's self-esteem. Um, and generally, I find that with businesses, you know, if, if they have a choice between making more money and making sure people's feelings aren't hurt, they're going to go with the money. And I don't think that Facebook cares at all what showing like counts is doing to people's, you know, mental health. Um, I mean, I know they, they don't give a shit. Um, and that's fine. Honestly, like you don't have to use the platform, right? Like if, if, if Instagram is a negative force in your life, then like, then don't use it. I don't smoke cigarettes because like cigarettes give you cancer. I would actually love to smoke. I would look really cool smoking. I think, you know, smoking is a cool aesthetic, honestly. Like I, I know that's probably not a super popular opinion, but like, you know, I think cigarettes look cool. Fucking sue me. I mean, I don't smoke cigarettes because they kill you. Okay, cool. If you have a big fucking problem with Instagram, then just delete it. Like, you don't need Instagram. You can, my barber has a flip phone. He seems to be doing fine. I mean, he's a strange guy, but like, he doesn't have Instagram. So like, I don't see Instagram's big responsibility to the world to like, do something different. Um, because you can just not use it. Uh, you know, if it is affecting, you know, young kids' self-esteem, then they could probably do more to keep younger kids off the platform. Um, but I think like counts is, you know, is overblown as a problem with the platform. I think that, you know, a bigger driver of people's neuroses is follower count. I don't think most people are like, you know, sweating for likes. I think they're sweating for followers. Um, and I don't think they will ever get rid of that. Um, I think that would be stupid. And, uh, I think again, like there are certainly things about it. There are certainly like negative impacts of having like this digital popularity contest, but like also welcome to life. I don't know what to tell you. Like, Everything is competition. I, I, I mean, that's not changing. Uh, so um, we probably stuck with it. Now we just deal with it. So question two is about purging photos. Like what are the implications? There was an article about people, young people specifically, purging their accounts, not kind of keeping a, a, a linear feed. Um, look, the way kids use the internet is super weird. The way they use Instagram is very strange. Like my niece has like 500 followers and gets like 700 comments on a photo or something. It's fucking crazy. Like, you know, her friends will comment 15 or 20 times and then they're just having conversations in the comments. I think the comments section of Instagram is a very real thing for youth culture and much less a real thing for, uh, you know, ancients like myself. I'm never really commenting and, uh, I could engage more in people that comment on my photos, but I just, I just don't. Um, so I'm sorry if you engage, but for young people, it's, it's real. And I do think they use these things in a different way and they, you know, grew up with Snapchat. And so this idea of a feed is not as important to them and young people don't know who the hell they are and are constantly like, think they're reinventing themselves when they're just like, trying on other people's identities until they eventually figure out who they are. So it makes sense that they're kind of constantly wiping the slate clean and starting over again. Um, I think it's interesting to look at it and understand the way young people use Instagram or any platform because whatever the next platform is will be built for young people. And so understanding their behavior can help you to understand you know, where the future of social is going, which is seemingly more conversational um, and, you know, more instant and less permanent. But 
I will say that like having followers is huge. Like I had dinner with my, my niece, who's a, a freshman in high school. And like the fact that I have 23,000 followers, which is really not much, uh, is like a thing in her school. She's like, Oh, all my friends like think you're cool because you have these followers, which like is hilarious and ridiculous, but gaining a following is still incredibly important to them. So there was this conversation about like, Facebook wants to go away from followers and they want to make things more a conversation between friends. But like, from what I see with young people, they are still very focused on gaining a following and being an influencer and, and having a big audience. And that is not going to be like DM conversations back and forth. So, um, I don't really think there's any implications for, um, other influencers other than, you know, a drum that we kind of beat over and over again is that like, especially as all of us are aging, that is a, a constant. Um, but I think as you get over 30 and you get further away from youth culture, I think that you have to be more, uh, what do I want to say? You have to be more direct in like trying to understand it and immerse yourself in it so that you don't get caught, you know, 10 years from now, not understanding the world at all uh, because your ability to operate in that world and make money in it will be diminished very quickly. So I think if there's anything to learn, it's that it's important to continue to learn how young people are using these tools. Is anyone purging? Um, do you find that, that purging could like help your account if you're an influencer? Is that something that you should be thinking about? Or? I don't think so. I don't think there's any real benefit to deleting old photos. I mean, I think the, you know, the idea that someone would scroll really far back in your feed now seems kind of crazy. Although I feel like that used to happen a lot more. Uh, other if you're like stalking a potential Tinder date, like why are you going deep on someone's Instagram? I don't know. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't really think there's any benefit unless it was your thing unless your thing was like i always have one instagram photo up and that is it and i don't have a feed well okay like that could be unique i guess um and you can build a following potentially doing something with that but it would have to be kind of gimmicky like that i think so now that people, more people are using igtv the question is what metrics should we be focusing on well first let's you know, I was talking to Chloe last week and hopefully you guys watched that episode. She's great. Uh, and you know, she talked about IGTV videos doing really well, doing better than her YouTube videos. And I was kind of interested in that. And then we published an IGTV video that did quite well for views. And I was like, this seems a little fishy because like Facebook has a traditionally really loose definition of what a view is. So did some research and for IGTV, uh, I think it's five seconds or three seconds. I think it's three or five seconds that you have to watch a video for it to count as a view. On a YouTube that's over a minute, that's 30 seconds that you need to watch for it to count as a view. So, and, and if you look at IGTV and you look at your stats, it shows a graph of how long people watched and like look at how many, I, I would say 70% of the views are less than 30 seconds. So if it was on YouTube, 70% of your views would have not been counted as views. So this is what Instagram is doing to try. And because people are so blinded by likes and view counts and things like that, it's a really simple way for them to try and pull YouTubers away from YouTube into Instagram. Cause it's like, holy shit, I'm getting a hundred thousand views on, on YouTube, but I'm getting 400,000 on Instagram. Where are you going to post? You're going to post on Instagram. And then you're going to realize, holy shit, nobody's actually watching these videos. They're watching two or three seconds of it and turning it off. That is not watching your video. Um, so I think it is kind of bullshit the way Instagram is counting a view. I personally think that it should be standard across all the platforms. So you can just know a view is a view and it is, it has a definition and that definition is standard across any platform because it gives Instagram an unfair advantage in the like vanity metrics, but the real impact of it is, is still, I think so much less than YouTube. So if you're getting 
100K on YouTube and 300 on Instagram, I would put every cent I have, which is not many cents, saying that the 100,000 YouTube video views are much more impactful than the 300,000 Instagram views because I bet 80% of those are not watching the full video. They're watching the first few seconds because it came in their feed and it auto played or something and then they scrolled off of it. But Instagram counts that as a view so that they can sell more ads and they can attract people away from YouTube. It's bullshit. I would not get too wrapped up in it and I would look at your metrics, look at your IGTV views, try and calculate what percentage of them made it to 30 seconds and use that number to look at your YouTube views um, and understand kind of should you be moving away from YouTube. Um, other than that, IGTV doesn't give you too many metrics. They're, they're pretty light right now. So um, I think we're still in the kind of infancy of that product and it's performance in the way that we kind of talk about it. So I wouldn't sweat performance that much. I would just kind of experiment a little bit and see what's working for you and what's not. You use the second time you shit on Facebook today. Mm. Hope Mark's not watching, but um, I don't know that I shit on Facebook earlier. I don't think Facebook has any, um, you know, do I think that they have a, a duty to try and protect our democracy? Sure. Yeah. I think that they, they do. Do I think they have a, a duty to shut down the terrible trolls and the, like the rampant harassment that is happening on their platforms? Like, absolutely. Should they shut down white supremacist groups? Absolutely. Um, but like they don't, they're like worrying about all of these other things. But anyway, I digress. They don't, I don't, I don't think they have a responsibility to like make people feel good. If they don't, if they don't think they have that responsibility, you know, uh, and they very clearly don't, I mean, they're one of the most profitable companies in the world and that's their focus. And I think the sooner everyone understands that the, the kind of sooner you can welcome yourself into adulthood, it may not be right, but it is the world. And like, it, it's, it's not changing. And the only way to, to change Facebook's mind is to do that with your wallet, you know, and, and, and if you don't want to use it, don't use it. I think, you know, but I have no problem with, with them generally. <laughs> I think they're a business and they make decisions like a business. Um, I do wish all the platforms would take harassment more seriously. Um, but I also understand it's an incredibly complex question that starts to bleed into, you know, your right to free speech. And, you know, it, I don't envy the people trying to solve that problem because you can't just wholesale ban every right wing nut because then you have to do it with left wing nuts and it just gets very complex. Anyway, I'm going to go get a tan and go to St. Lucia. Um, I don't know what you guys are doing, but I doubt it's as good. So goodbye. Goodbye.